two, its final score. Good afternoon, welcome to Final Score. The goals are going in around the country and to talk you through the action as we approach the final whistle, I have with me Steve Claridge, John Hartson and Garth Crooks. But the question on everybody's lips just a few hours ago was would they or wouldn't they shake hand? Manchester City went on to beat Chelsea 4-2. Chelsea were down to nine men by the time the final whistle went. We will have details on that game in just a moment. At the bottom this afternoon, the big battle is between Burnley and Portsmouth. Damian Johnson can bring us the latest. It's 1-1. Frederick Piquion put Pompey in front. A tap-in from Danny Webber's cross. A brilliant flick lob from Martin Patterson brought Burnley level. In the second half, Clark Carlisle considered a foolish penalty, uh, lunging in at uh, Piquion, but Brian Jensen saved Jamie O'Hara's uh, penalty as the ball goes in the area danger here but it's cleared by Portsmouth yeah Jamie O'Hara's spot kick was saved by Jensen at the other end the home side squandered a great chance in the second half Stephen Fletcher heading over from five yards he was completely unchallenged Pompey have uh, put their off the field uh, problems behind them and applied themselves admirably but Burnley desperate for a victory 1-1 the woodwork looks to be playing a big part in the game at the Reebok between Bolton and Wolves Harry Gration very, very true, Mark. Wolves, you know, are often accused of being negative, throwing everything now at Bolton. David Jones hit the post. Matt Jarvis went close. Loads of half chances. Foley has just hit the post again. Bolton clinging on to that Zat Knight goal and half time. Thanks to some wonderful skills from Chung Yong Lee. Good match now. Bolton still leading 1 0. A penalty is the difference between Birmingham and Wigan at St Andrews. Ivan Gaskell. Yes, Birmingham ahead through a rather dubious penalty too. Fahey won it, Melchiot enraged. McFadden, two minutes into first half at a time, dispatched it into the corner. Birmingham well on top, Dan hit the bar. McFadden, well, he was denied by a second brilliant Kirkland block. Wigan, pretty woeful. Birmingham 1-0, Wigan. <laughs> or something like that. Let's get the latest uh, details then. I promised them to you on Chelsea against Manchester City. It was an astonishing game. It finished 4-2 to City. Jonathan Pearce, watch this one. Chelsea 2, Manchester City 4. Astonishing. Wayne Bridge shunned John Terry's handshake at the start, but City looked limp-wristed as Chelsea took a first-half grip. Maluda flashing a drive over, Joe Cole stinging the hands of Given and then feeding Frank Lampard to slot... How much did the players want to win today because of Wayne Bridge? Wayne Bridge, uh, for me, played very well, very concentrated. It uh, was difficult for, for him, but he played very well, like uh, all the teammates. In the first half, I think that the Chelsea played very well. And uh, we defended very well. And second half, uh, we played very, very well. And uh, we, we win this game. But the football is uh, strange. After one sending off, for us, is too easy. It's not a good day. It's not a good day. And we have to look forward. I have uh, confidence in this team. Uh, we are doing a very good season. In, in football, can happen that uh, one day is not good. This was uh, uh, was not a good a good day for us. Forget the handshake, forget the Wayne mm. Bridge stuff just for now. Mm. Purely in terms of the title race, that's a big result. It's a massive result. Chelsea's game is game in hand is gone. It means that United now sixty points haven't played. They'll play tomorrow in the League Cup final, as we know. Man City go on to forty nine points. They go into the coveted fourth spot, mm. and of course now. Arsenal, who played later today, suddenly are thinking, hang on a second, we beat Stoke today. With our run-in, we could win the title by default. So it has massive implications for the top four spots. They'll be uh, three points behind, will Arsenal, uh, Chelsea, if they win at Stoke today. John, um, John Terry didn't have a very good game today. Uh, he, he was in kind of responsible for the, for the first goal that Carlos Tevez scored. Um, is this just a blip that he's having? Or, or is he affected by everything that's going on? It would definitely be affected because it affects all of us. Um, I think you can't have that much exposure and that much bad press. And Chelsea have given him time off to go and sort himself out over in Dubai. Um, but for me today, John looked subdued. Normally, he is a rock 
best centre half in the country for me. England, you know, everything else. Top, top class defender. But his form of late last week is, is wild. Lash at a ball, never made contact. Wolves nearly scored from it. Today, there was once or twice he was done for pace and wasn't quite strong enough with Tevez when he yeah. went in. And so it's definitely affecting the lad. Um, and as I said, I just felt he was a little subdued today. He's, 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 he's normally a rock for you. He's a fault for the Inter Milan goal, wasn't he? In the first yeah, goal, he's yeah. let the lad come inside. Exactly. Just on the, sit on the City thing, because City fans will be going, well, you're not giving us any credit here. Roberto Mancini set them out at Liverpool last week, and yeah. he said this to not concede. Yeah. The same today, they were set out not to concede, well, yet they managed to score four. Look, let's be honest, if you'd watched the first 40, 40 minutes of this game, you would they didn't have four, four touches. Mm. They didn't get in the Chelsea half four times, with much less four goals. It was an incredible... Incredible game. The change around the game, no one could have could have actually said that this was going to happen you know, if you'd no. watched the first half. But what he does do well, what I like about it, he sticks to his principles, he doesn't change the side, even though they are a poor second best. You know, he knows what he wants, and as soon as Tevez scores that goal, Chelsea actually then start to go after Man City a little bit. They leave themselves at the back one for one. And boy, with the pace that Man City had on the break, they absolutely destroyed them. Let's just talk about that. that oh, we're going to talk about the handshake in a second, but we're going to go to Burnley, where I believe there's a second penalty of the afternoon. Damien Johnson. Bizarre set of circumstances. Clark Carlisle, who conceded a penalty earlier on, has conceded another one. He's tripped to substitute John Utaka. Did it in possession, tried to dribble his way out of trouble, lost the ball, tripped Utaka, and it's a penalty to Portsmouth. It will be taken by Hassan Yebda, a change of penalty takers. The first one uh, was saved by Jensen from Jamie O'Hara. Portsmouth decide to give uh, the responsibility to uh, Yebda. We're waiting for the kick now, stay with us. Up steps Yebda, and he sends Jensen the wrong way and scores. Portsmouth lead by two goals to one, a nightmare afternoon for Clark Carlisle. Hassan Yebda, 2-1. So Portsmouth uh, two one up at Burnley. We're not, don't laugh, God. This could be serious. We're going to go to uh, St Andrews, where the linesman is down injured. Ivan Gaskell. Yes, he is. I think it's Mr T Massey from Cheshire, uh, and it was a bizarre incident. This because the ball was heading out of play right by the corner flag, right where the tunnel is, where the players emerge at St Andrews, and. Uh, James McCarthy looked like he was heading out of play. Ridgewell came in with, a, I thought, a really over-the-top, late, late t challenge. The ball was out of play. He uh, flew in the air, did McCarthy, but in so doing, he took the corner flag out, and I think the corner flag actually hit Mr Massey, the assistant referee, bang in the side of the head. It was an unnecessary challenge from uh, Ridgewell, and it was unfortunate... The linesman got it right in the face. He's down. He looks pretty seriously uh, injured, actually. There are four, five, maybe six medics around him. He's not got back to his feet. We hope he's OK. But it was an unnecessary incident, but an accident in the end. It was a, a complete accident. McCarthy was, was absolutely clattered by Liam Ridgewell in that. A big goal in the Championship, as you can see. Chris Brunt has put West Brom 2-1 up on Derby. They were 1-0 down at half-time. Confirmation of the Portsmouth penalty as well. Uh, this will be a shocking result for Burnley, Steve, won't it, if they lose at home to Portsmouth? Uh, well, it's at home, it's to the bottom side. They've just been put into administration. I don't think that it gets much worse than this. And psychologically, I don't think you'll get a bigger blow all season for Burnley. They've been in poor form and it's just continued in this game. So I've told you that West Brom are now two on up on Derby. Let's find out how the leaders in the Championship are doing. Newcastle are up. Watford, John Anderson. They're leading by two goals to nil. Goals early in each half. Both of them headers from set pieces. Colaccini after only four minutes. And then Andy Carroll five minutes into the second half. Carroll should have put this game to bed with another even easier header, which he somehow managed to miss. The rain is absolutely teeming here. The pitch is cutting up. Watford are doing their level best to try and get themselves back into this game. But at at the moment, the conditions are simply conspiring against them. It's Watford nil, Newcastle 2. Uh, that's nine for the season now for Chris Lyons. Bristol Rovers 3-1 up against Colchester as Rovers try to get themselves in a playoff spot. So we've heard about the leaders, we've heard about the third place side in the Championship, sandwiched in between those two are Nottingham Forest. How are they doing at Leicester? Andy May. They're losing Mark 1-0. Leicester a one-up a few minutes ago. Bruno Berner smashed the ball past Lee Camp after a goalmouth scramble following a free kick. As it stands, Forest are heading for their fourth 1-0 defeat away from home on the trot. Rob Arnshaw has hit the bar for them and Radoslav Majewski has had a few chances too. Michael Morrison has rattled the crossbar for Leicester. They lead 1-0. 
And let's hear about that second goal that West Brom scored against Derby. Andrew James. Yes, it's uh, West Brom 2, Derby 1, Mark, as you say. Derby went in front just after half-time through Chris Porter. Should have gone 2-0 up. Gilles Sunu, the young Frenchman on loan from Arsenal, should have scored from five yards out but didn't. And then Chris Brunt got the first of his two goals, long ball forward, and he had a go from the edge of the box to beat Bywater and then found himself in the middle of a goal-mouth scramble and poked the ball home. So two goals for Chris Brunt and an unconvincing West Bromwich Albion lead by two goals to one. At Bramall Lane this afternoon, Sheffield United went 3-0 up on Plymouth. Plymouth got it back to 3-2. The sixth goal of the afternoon has got in, though. Alan Biggs. Well, it's a remarkable goal, the most remarkable of the lot, because it's an absolute howler by the uh, Plymouth goalkeeper, David Stockdale, who put the ball down to clear upfield, completely oblivious to the fact that Richard Cresswell was close to him. Stockdale turned his back as he went back to take a run to the ball, and uh, Cresswell simply uh, pushed the ball to one side and rolled it into an empty net, a goal United needed, they should have been over the hills and far away at 3-0 up, camera and then Ward with great first half goals, Ward with another early in the second but Plymouth substitutes, Yannick Balassi and then Joe Mason uh, reduced those arrears to 3-2 but they may have been killed off now by that howler from the goalkeeper, Sheffield United 4 Plymouth 2 so, if you're a United fan, you'll be happy with that scoreline. You'll be delighted by what Jackie Oatley's about to tell you. <laughs> Reading 5, Sheffield Wednesday nil, and Alan Irvin's honeymoon period is well and truly over. His side has been very much outplayed here. It was 2-0 at the break after Jimmy Kebe's strike, strike was deflected past the unlucky Lee Grant, who's actually played all right. Gregor's Raziak slotted home the second on the rebound. In his second half, Simon Church scored an absolute beauty, a left-foot rocket from outside the uh, box, in off the left-hand post. Watch it on the Football League show tonight. Raziak tapped home the second from Kebe's cross, and Kebe made the most of some shocking Sheffield Wednesday defending to make it five. Two defenders ran into each other, allowing Kebe a clear run through to goal. And they could easily have made it 6-0. That would be the same scoreline by which Reading beat Sheffield Wednesday last season. It's been another goal at the Hawthorns of West Brom increased their lead. Andrew James. Mark, they have. They've wrapped it up now, surely. 3-1 to uh, West Brom. And Simon Cox, one of these substitutes, beat the offside trap, put the ball under Bywater, and West Brom comfortably in control. They lead by three goals to one. And a goal at the Rico to uh, tell you about. Lindsay Hooper. Yes, there has been Mark and Scunthorpe have managed to pull a goal back. It's now Coventry 2, Scunthorpe 1. And it's substitute Grant McCann who hit what looked like a half volley. It was all very quick, but it uh, was a cracking shot and it went past Westwood into the top left-hand corner. Um, I've got to mention as well that the announcer here uh, very, very shortly ago announced that 197,000 were here at the Rico. I can confirm that's not true. It's 16,197 but Coventry 2, Scunthorpe 1. Sean Miller has equalised for crew at Lincoln City after 84 minutes. Uh, Seb Harris has put Northampton 2 1 up on Cheltenham. Leicester were 1 0 up last time we were at the Walkers against Nottingham Forest. There's been a second goal. Andy May. Mark Leicester are now 2 up. Paul Gallagher with an absolute peach of a free kick. Well worth checking out on the Football League show tonight. Right footed on the edge of the right hand side of the box. Top left hand corner. Lee Camp had no chance. Leicester 2, Nottingham Forest 0. There have been a lot of penalties this afternoon. The latest one has come at Easter Road. Brian McLaughlin. And it's gone to St Johnston. Liam Craig will take the spot kick. They went behind to a spot kick after just two minutes. Anthony Stokes scoring for Hibs. Liam Craig with a chance to put Saints back on level terms. The ball was played into the box. It was uh, Colin Sang who flicked the ball off. It came off the hand of Chris Hogg. It was a very, very harsh decision, I have to say, by referee Ewan Norris. But the penalty kick is going to be taken. Craig puts the ball on the spot. He steps back. The boos ring round Easter Road. The hip supporters think it was harsh. But Craig steps up left foot and smashes the ball into the roof of the net. With six minutes left here at Easter Road. It's now Hibs 1, St Johnston 1. Dundee United have only won one of their last six home SPL games, but I think they're going to get the three points today, Ian Turner. Well, they're definitely going to get the three points now because just as you joined me, Mark Morgaro, Gomez has just made it. Dundee United 3, Falkirk nil. It's his second goal of the afternoon. He scored a lovely goal in the first half after David Goodwillie had given Dundee United the lead from the penalty spot. They've played much better today than they have in recent weeks. They're definitely going to take the three points. That result Result at Easter Road is going to please them as well. They could go third. Dundee United 3, Falkirk nil.
Would you believe that in League One? Stockport were 4-0 up on Wickham, but the Stockport keeper Owen Fon Williams has just put through his own goal. It is now 4-3 between the two sides at the bottom of League One. That's a goal update from St Andrews. We'll now get a linesman update from Ivan Gaskell. Yes, the linesman update is that we have a new one. Trevor Massey was injured in a challenge that uh, Ridgewell put on McCarthy uh, about five or six minutes ago. It was a pretty horrible challenge, but it meant that the corner flag flew into the face of Trevor Massey, the uh, linesman to my right. And uh, he has uh, spent four or five minutes being treated. He's been carried off. There was a long delay. And then, uh, well, the fourth official, Steve Bennett from Kent, took over the red and yellow flag which will disappoint Roy Etkin no end. The Birmingham assistant manager will now have nobody to rant at. And, by the way, it's Birmingham 1, Wigan 0. Nottingham Forest afternoon looks like it's all but over, doesn't it? Leicester have gone 3-0 up at the Walkers through Andy King. There has been another goal, the seventh of the afternoon, for Alan Biggs at Bramall Lane. It's now Sheffield United 4, Plymouth 3, and we have to bear in mind that in their pl three previous games, unbeaten Plymouth have come from behind to snatch something. It'll be remarkable if they do it today, but they're in with a hope because Jamie Mackey has hooked in from 25 yards. Remember, Plymouth were three down here today, but now the arrears is that one single goal, Sheffield United 4, Plymouth 3. Chris Brown's 11th of the season has now put Preston 3-0 up on Cardiff. Notts County 4-0 up on Hereford through Luke Rogers from the penalty spot. Steve Cottrell's first game in charge of County that one. Let's hear more about Leicester's third goal of the afternoon from Andy May. Well, Nottingham Forest are looking like they're going to collapse here at the Walker Stadium. King has won the points for Leicester, tapping in from close range after a burner shot. Lee Camp, very unfortunately, had no chance because of the change of direction. It's Leicester 3, Nottingham Forest 0. It's looking like it's going to be a huge psychological blow for Burnley this afternoon. They're 2-1 down against Portsmouth. Damien Johnson, are they showing any signs of getting back into this one? Well, a bit of a late rally, but uh, many of the Burnley fans are uh, voting with their feet and making an early exit from Turf Moor. That uh, Hassan Yebda penalty from a, a second penalty uh, uh, concession, shall I say, from Clark Carlisle has put Portsmouth in control here. They've been uh, admirable this afternoon. They lead 2-1. Are Bolton uh, holding on against Wolves? Harry Grayson. Oh, how priceless could this be for Bolton? 20 seconds left. Zat Knight's first goal of the season. What a time to score it right in half time. Wolves have hit the post twice, but it's all Bolton at the moment. 1 0, seconds left. Let's drop into League One. The leaders are Norwich. They're at Oldham this afternoon. Tony Lockwood. And the leaders are holding on to a slender lead. Grant Holt, who's been in a rich vein of form with a moment that matters for Norwich. Anthony McNamee's left wing cross. Holt side foot finish. Oldham, who hadn't scored in the last two games, are finding goals hard to come by. And that surely threatens their League One status. It's Oldham nil, Norwich one. And the latest from the Liberty, it's Swansea against Peterborough. Jason Mohammed. Well, Mark, if you just walked into the Liberty Stadium, you would have trouble trying to work out why Peterborough are bottom of the table. Sure, they're 1-0 down, but quite why it's taken them an hour to get going suggests they're short on confidence. They've passed superbly and created two great chances in this second half. Tommy Rowe should have scored seconds after the break and Lee Frecklington also missed a header when six yards out. Swansea lead through David Cottrell's 19th-minute penalty. Lee Trundle and Shefki Kuchi have both had shots saved. And Shefki Kuchi has missed so many chances today when he aimed a foot after missing a good chance into an advertising hoarding I thought he was going to miss uh, you may have just seen it dropped off the uh, video print there Grimsby now 2-1 down 2-0 uh, down sorry at Dagenham and Dagenham and Redbridge that'll make it 25 league games without a win for Grimsby Mark Bishop in the championship is watching Doncaster against Crystal Palace Doncaster Rovers won Crystal Palace won 664 Palace fans Mark away to my left Getting ready to applaud Neil Warnock's uh, last ever appearance, we hear, as the club's manager. It's been a great fight back from Palace. 1 0 down to James Coppinger's 25 yard rocket in the first half. And then Kieran Dejali at the far post after a brilliant run down the left from Ambrose. It's going to finish 1 1 and an end to Warnock's managerial career as Crystal Palace manager here at the stadium. So, from his current club to maybe his future one, QPR are at Middlesbrough, Steve Sutton. Well, they're still uh, lo uh, losing by two goals to nil, QPR. Middlesbrough's uh, two penalties from uh, Barry Robson late in the first half. But uh, if Warnock does take over on Monday, as expected, then he can at least take comfort from a spirited second half, which has seen uh, QPR hit a post through Mikel Leggettwood and Marcus Ben put the ball in the net, only for it to be ruled offside. Middlesbrough two, QPR nil. 
to the League Two leaders, Rochdale, who are at Macclesfield. It hasn't really been a game that Mark Webber's been enjoying. As messy as a teenager's bedroom, as frustrating as working out pie with a faulty abacus, that's this game. Macclesfield have had too many headers go astray in front of goal. Rochdale's finishing no better. Even for their goal, Chris O'Grady put it in. Arguably, though, he got an arm in from Macclesfield's Nat Brown. Terrible, terrible match. Nil one. Yeah, he's, he's not enjoying it. Uh, James Mason in the Championship is watching Barnsley Blackpool. And it's 1-0 to Barnsley, Mark, in a game of poor quality and few chances. It's Ian Hume's third goal of the season that separates these two sides. On as a substitute, Hume reacted first to John Macken's knockdown to fire past Matt Jilt to send Oakwell wild. It's 1-0 to the Tykes. One goalless game in the Championship. Unfortunately, Andy Barwell, it's the one you're at. Yes, it is. It's uh, two of the Championship's draw specialists as well. No surprise it's all square, but there's been plenty of effort. Chances have been developed. Ipswich's Jack Colbeck's hit the bar and Bristol City's Chris Ewellamu's found the crossbar, but it remains Ipswich nil, Bristol City nil. Let's go back to Turf Moor where Burnley have got a free kick in an interesting position, Damien Johnson. Yeah, they've taken it. It's been uh, safely gathered by Mark James. Chris Eagles, uh, a lively presence on as a substitute in the second half. He's been their best player this season. Uh, he's been lively this afternoon, but he can't break down this Portsmouth defence so far. Portsmouth on course for victory, 2-1. Right, we've moved on from the linesman now at St Andrews. Ivan Gaskell, tell us about the football. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that Wigan have never won here, but, my, they came pretty close to squaring this game. They should have been out of sight, Birmingham, and they've made ever such hard work of a rather flat, peculiar sort of second half. But Roddy Eager from uh, around about uh, the penalty spot, has just drifted the ball wide when he really should have found the target. I don't think Hart would have got there. He didn't need to. Birmingham hanging on a bit here. They really shouldn't be 1-0. The final whistle has gone at the Reebok Stadium. What a big scope at Burnley. Damien Johnson, what's happened now? Portsmouth are going down to ten men. It was a body check. I didn't see who did it. Was it Rocha? I think it was Ricardo Rocha who's got uh, the red card. It's a second yellow. He's off. It's a free kick to Burnley. Are we going to have late drama here? So he's off, Steve, for a second. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it wasn't that long ago that he was last sent off. Well, I mean, it, it, in point of fact, it was actually... Uh, he wasn't sent off at, uh, initially, was it? No. Somebody else, who was Yebda, was sent yeah. off, and then he, he changed it. The referee gets, gets this one, at least he gets the right player. I'm not sure it's the right decision. It's, it's a pretty innocuous challenge, I've got to say. Well, it's second yellow, Steve. Yeah. Well, in view of the... I mean, it's a bookable offence, it's cynical. He just took, he just, well, I, he thought just... he's, I, more, I thought he more than pulled away more than mm. actually put himself into it, but it's, it's something and nothing, Garth, isn't it? You know? We uh, went to Turf Moor and left the uh, Bolton game without really talking about it. Huge, huge win for Bolton. As results stand, they'll be 15th tonight, John. Massive result for both Owen Carroll and Bolton. Um, I said before the kick-off that if they have aspirations of staying in the Premier League, this is a game they have to win today. Wolves, um, two places above them. They've got above Wolves now, psychologically, that would be great. They're out to the bottom three. And um, Wolves, a little bit unfortunate, as you say, at the Woodwork twice, at the, at the post twice, sorry. Um, but uh, Bolton, you know, great result for them. Uh, you, uh, you may have just seen on the video prints there, Torquay haven't won at home since Boxing Day in League Two, but thanks to an own goal, they are now 2-1 up on Accrington Stanley. The final whistle has gone at the Hawthorns. Andrew James. West Bromwich Albion 3, Derby County 1, Mark. Sometimes promoted sides have to grind out results in unlikely circumstances, and so it was for West Brom today. Completely out of sorts for an hour, they should have gone two down, had Derby's Sunu converted an early chance to add to Chris Porter's goal early in the second half. But Albion survived and recovered to take all three points thanks to two goals from Chris Brunt and a tap-in from substitute Simon Cox. West Brom three, Derby one. And the final whistle has gone. Uh, Doncaster, Mark Bishop, has Neil Warne gone over to the Palace fans? Yes, he is at the moment. Doncaster one, Crystal Palace one, it's finished. And Neil Warnock going over to my left-hand side to pay tribute to the 664 Palace fans who have made the journey up here. Warnock's last ever appearance, we believe, as Crystal Palace's manager before taking up his new job at Queen's Park Rangers on Monday. Dejali with the equaliser, cancelling out Coppinger's 25-yard rocket in the first half. 1-1, it's finished at the keep moat. Into the SPL, where the final whistle has gone at Easter Road. Brian McLaughlin. Yeah, it's funny. Hibbs won, St Johnston won the point. Not enough for Hibbs to maintain the third spot in the table. Both goals coming via penalties. Anthony Stokes for Hibbs after just two minutes, but Liam Craig deservedly equalised for Saints with just six minutes left. It's finished at Easter Road. Hibbs won, St Johnston won. It's been another, another dangerous free kick at Turf Moor. Damien Johnson. Yes, the uh, Portsmouth goal is under some real pressure here. 
Uh, it's a corner now. It'll be taken by um, Danny Fox on the uh, left-hand side, curled in. They go up, a header, it's wide. And that may well be Burnley's last chance. So a, re a chorus of boos from the home fans when uh, Portsmouth decided to make a substitution late on just to break up the play. It had the desired effect. We're playing the last few seconds. Been a late goal of Vicarage Road where the leaders Newcastle were two up. John Anderson. It's now 2-1. Watford have pulled one back and there may be time because we're into four minutes of added on time here. The goal scored by substitute Will Hoskins. A ball thundered in from the right-hand side. The Newcastle defence couldn't deal with it. It broke kindly for Hoskins and he lashed it into the net. Watford one, Newcastle two. Oh, no matter how many times you shout, he's offside, I mean, it's still being given. Yeah, yeah. Right, Jason, Jason Mohammed is at the Liberty Stadium with some good news for John Hart. Yep, the 19th minute penalty from David Cottrell, enough for Swansea City to see off the championship's bottom club, but the playoff chasers made very hard work of it. 12 shots on target, and that gave Peterborough hope of getting back into it. Trundle and Cucci both missed good chances for the Swans. Tommy Rowe and Lee Frecklington could have made Swansea pay. It's Forrest up next, and that is going to be huge for Paolo Sosa. Swansea City 1, Peter B United 0. As Swansea fans will like uh, the result from Deepdale as well this afternoon, Naz Premji's been watching Preston Cardiff. They certainly will, Mark. Preston North End 3, Cardiff City 0, John Parkins brace and Chris Brown's sublime finish after a nightmare howler from Cardiff keeper Peter Enkelman securing all three points here for Fergie Jr. Paul Coots talked himself into an early bath for the home side. It didn't really matter. Cardiff's stuttering form continues. Preston North End 3, Cardiff City 0. In the lunchtime game in League One, Leeds could only draw two all at Huddersfield. Have Norwich taken advantage of that at Oldham? Tony Lockwood. Absolutely five points clear of their nearest rivals, made to fight all the way, a single goal victory secured by Grant Holt. Anthony McNamee set him up, Holt's side foot finish for Oldham. Three games now without a goal. Oldham nil, Norwich won. The challenge now for Alan Biggs is to give us the story of Sheffield United Plymouth in a very tight report. I'll try it. 4-3 to Sheffield United. What a drama they made, though, of what should have been a convincing victory. 3-0 up early in the second half. Henri Camera and two from Jamie Ward. But Plymouth kept coming back. First rapid-fire goals from substitutes Balassi and Mason. Then after a goal gifted to Richard Cresswell, Jamie Mackey fired Argyle back into it. And Mason late on fired just wide. So it all boils down in the end to an awful clangor from David Stockdale in Plymouth's goal to present... Cresswell with United's fourth. It is 4-3 at Brummel Lane. And the final whistle has yeah. gone at Turf Moor. Not so much a big win for Portsmouth, but a big defeat for Burnley. Damien Johnson. Yes, devastating for Burnley. A nightmare afternoon for their captain, Clark Carlisle. He conceded two penalties, one saved by Brian Jensen. The second scored to give beleaguered Pompey their victory. Uh, Portsmouth put their off-field problems behind them and really applied themselves. Frederick Piquion tapped them in front. Martin Patterson's fine lob made it all square at the break. Carlisle's lunge on Piquion earned the visitors their first penalty. Brian Jensen saved Jamie O'Hara's spot kick. And Carlisle gave away another one, tripping John Utaka after losing possession. Hassan Yebda buried the penalty kick. Pompey went down to ten men. Ricardo Rocha sent off, but they survived. 2-1 it finished. Steve, we were talking earlier that, you know, this is a Portsmouth side who could just go and play today. All, yeah. all the pressure was off after yeah. what's happened. Yeah, I mean, the body language said that when we saw them coming out. They looked extremely relaxed. Um, I'm, not so, I'm, not so, I'm not so sure that, this, that, that administration and, and obviously relegation is, is, is uh, like a thunderbolt from the blue. I think it was almost expected. So, yeah, I mean, the, the pressure's off them now. But the pressure, believe you me, after that performance is very much on Burnley. Do, do you think what's happened to Portsmouth, the fact they they're going to lose those points against the administration, increased the pressure on Burnley this afternoon? Possibly, and the fact that Portsmouth are rock bottom. Um, everybody expects to beat the bottom side, really. Peterborough, for example, have got the Swansea today, the bottom side, and got beat. But for me, Burnley, it's a, it's a very, very disappointing result for them today. Losing, as you say, they've got to win their home games. So hard to travel away from home in the Premier League and get results. And it's very disappointing for them. But looking at the league table, there's, what, another 11 games to go? Yeah. There's, a, there's a clutch of teams down there. There's plenty of points to play for. So still, you know, from a Burnley point of view, they have to stay positive and they have to keep playing every week.
Let's go uh, into the Championship. The final whistle has now gone at the Walker Stadium. It was the big game of the day between Leicester and Nottingham Forest. Andy May. The Foxes have won the bragging rights tonight in the East Midlands, beating Forest 3-0, with all of the goals coming in the second half. First up, Burner smashing home from close range. Gallagher fired in a terrific free kick, and then King wrapped things up with a tap-in, also from close range. The away form of Billy Davis's side could be the difference between automatic promotion and the playoffs for them. Leicester 3. Nottingham Forest nil. And the final whistle has now gone at St Andrews. Ivan Gaskell. Generally a rather poor spectacle. Wigan pretty woeful. Birmingham only slightly better. Birmingham won it thanks to a dubious penalty in first half at a time from uh, McFadden after a dubious decision. The assistant ref took one in the face and had to be stretched off. Eight minutes of at a time, but Birmingham forced to grimly hang on, which they duly did. And Newcastle managed to hold on as well. They were at Watford, as was John Anderson. Yes, it finished Watford 1, Newcastle 2. A first win in eight away games for the Magpies, who strengthened their grip on the top spot. They went ahead after only four minutes. Argentine defender Fabrizio Colicini heading home to uh, make it 1-0. And they were out of the blocks early in the second half to Newcastle. Andy Carroll doubling the lead with another header from a set piece. Watford grabbed a brief lifeline when Will Hoskins lashed home in stoppage time. But Newcastle claimed the points. Watford 1, Newcastle United 2. Thank you very much. Now, the build-up to all the big games starts here on Final Score from 2.30 every Saturday afternoon. All you've got to do is press the red button and then you get every goal as they go in. Time now for the classified football results with David Garrido. Thanks very much, Mark. We start, as always, with the Barclays Premier League. Birmingham City 1, Wigan Athletic 0. Bolton Wanderers 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers 0. Burnley 1, Portsmouth 2. Chelsea 2, Manchester City 4. Stoke City against Arsenal kicks off at half past five. In the Coca-Cola Championship, Barnsley 1, Blackpool 0. Coventry City 2, Scunthorpe United 1. Doncaster Rovers 1, Crystal Palace 1. Ipswich Town 0, Bristol City 0. Leicester City 3, Nottingham Forest 0. Middlesbrough 2, QPR 0. Preston North End 3, Cardiff City 0. Reading 5, Sheffield Wednesday 0. Sheffield United 4, Plymouth Argyle 3, Swansea City 1, Peterborough United 0, Watford 1, Newcastle United 2, West Bromwich Albion 3, Derby County 1. Coca-Cola League 1 now, the game between Brentford and Tranmere Rovers match postponed. Brighton and Hove Albion 2, Exeter City 0, Bristol Rovers 3, Colchester United 2. Carlisle United 2, Gillingham 0. Huddersfield Town 2, Leeds United 2. Leighton Orient 0, Swindon Town 0. Millwall 1, Hartlepool United 0. Oldham Athletic 0, Norwich City 1. Southampton 5, Walsall 1. Stockport County 4, Wickham Wanderers 3. And Yeovil Town 1, MK Dons, nil. Into League Two, Barnet, nil. Berry nil. Bradford City, one. Darlington, nil. Burton Albion, nil. Rotherham United, one. Chesterfield, nil. Aldershot Town, one. Dagenham and Redbridge, two. Grimsby Town, nil. Lincoln City, one. Crew Alexandra, one. Macclesfield Town, nil. Rochdale, 1. Morecambe, 1. Port Vale, 0. Northampton Town, 2. Cheltenham Town, 1. Notts County, 5. Hereford United, 0. Shrewsbury Town, 1. AFC Bournemouth, 0. And Torquay United, 2. Accrington Stanley, 1. The Blue Square Premier. Altrincham, 1. Great Athletic, 1. 
Cambridge against Tamworth match postponed. Crawley Town 2, Luton Town 1. Epsilon United 1, Barrow 4. Gateshead against Forest Green Rovers also match postponed. Hazen Yedding 1, Mansfield Town 1. Kidderminster Harriers 3, Histon 0. Rushton and Diamonds 0, Kettering Town 0. Salisbury City 1, Wrexham 1. And York City 0, Eastbourne Borough 1. In the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Aberdeen 0, Hearts 1. Dundee United 3, Falkirk 0. Hibernian 1, St Johnston 1. Motherwell 1, Kilmarnock 0. And St Mirren 0, Hamilton Academical 0. Iron Bruce Scottish Division 1 now. Edge United against Quinn of the South, match postponed. Greenwich Morton 1, Dunfermline Athletic 2. Inverness Caledonian Thistle 3, Air United 3. Partick Thistle 2, Ross County 1. And the match between Wraith Rovers and Dundee was also postponed. Scottish Div 2 now. Alloa Athletic 1, Peterhead 2. Arbroath 3, Dumbarton 1. The matches between Brecon City and Cadenbeath and Clyde and Stirling Albion were both postponed. And Stenhouse Muir 1, East Fife 1. Scottish Division 3. The matches at Albion Rovers, Elgin City, Four Fire Athletic and Livingston were all postponed. The one result and an Athletic 1, East Stirlingshire 0. The Principality Building Society Welsh Premier. Kyasus 1, Elements Kevin Druids 0, Carmarthen Town 0, Airbus UK 1, Haverford West County 1, Newtown 2, and the match between Welshpool Town and Gap Connors Quay was postponed. And the Carling Premiership, Ballymini United 0, Newry City 0, Dungannon Swifts 2, Glentoran 0. So Chelsea's lead remains at one point after their first home defeat under Carlo Ancelotti at the top of the Barclays Premier League. Manchester United will have to wait until next weekend to take advantage. A win at Wolves would take them top. Arsenal will move to within three points of Chelsea if they beat Stoke in today's late kick-off. Manchester City go fourth after their first win at Stamford Bridge since 1993. Portsmouth picked up three points today, but they'll lose nine on Tuesday. That's when the Premier League will formally ratify the points deduction they incurred by going into administration. Burnley missed the chance to climb out of the relegation zone, but Bolton were not so profligate with victory over Wolves, taking Owen Coyle's side up to 15th. Leaders Newcastle won to extend their advantage at the top of the championship to six points. West Brom are up to second after coming from behind to beat Derby. That's because Nottingham Forest were comprehensively beaten by East Midlands neighbours Leicester. Swansea won to close to within seven points of an automatic promotion place. At the bottom, Peterborough and Plymouth both lost and remain deep in trouble. Sheffield Wednesday were thumped 5-0 at Inform Reading and they now slip into the drop zone as a result. Crystal Palace secured a vital away point at Doncaster, so they are out of the relegation zone on goal difference. Uh, the victory for leaders Norwich extends the gap at the top of League One to five points after Leeds could only draw. Bottom club Stockport beat fellow strugglers Wickham in a seven-goal thriller to cut the gap on them to five points. Rochdale stretched their lead to five points at the top of League Two with a 1-0 victory at Macclesfield. Nearest rivals Bournemouth lost at Shrewsbury. And the bottom four sides all lost, which means Torquay's win against Accrington lifts the goals up to 20th. So, in the Blue Square Premier, there are now only 23 teams following Chester City's expulsion. Neither Oxford or Stevenage were in action today, so Oxford continue to lead the way by three points for now at least. At the bottom, Grace picked up a useful point at Altrincham. Forest Green's game at Gateshead was postponed to leave both clubs in the drop zone. 
into the SPL. The top two meet in tomorrow's old firm derby at Ibrox. Celtic will look to cut Rangers' seven-point lead. Dundee United are up to third after beating Falkirk 3-0. They replace Hibs, who extended their winless run to five games in the one-all draw with St Johnston. Back to the Premier League, and these are the headlines from today's games. Hassan Yebda gives Pompey fans something to celebrate at last, but his penalty deepens the gloom at Turf Moor, where Burnley missed the chance to climb out of the bottom three. It's a difference. And James McFadden's penalty gives Birmingham another win at St Andrews as relegation threatened Wigan are beaten again. Everything from all those games can be seen. Match of the day, BBC One, tonight at half past ten. The Football League show follows that, 20 to midnight on BBC One. Watford, Newcastle, the main game there. Then live football on the BBC tomorrow. The Carling Cup final between Aston Villa and Manchester United from two o'clock on BBC One. And then match of the day two is at 5 to 11 tomorrow night on BBC Two. Liverpool against Blackburn, Spurs against Everton. No doubt, boys, what the uh, story of the day is tomorrow, what the uh, story of the day is today, what the pictures will be on the back pages tomorrow. It will be Wayne Bridge not shaking John Terry's hand. I think the most significant thing for me about this, um, Mark, is that uh, I was told some time ago that Wayne Bridge would not shake hands with John Terry. He wants nothing to do with him. He's kept his word. That rather bodes badly for England because he said he will not join that World Cup squad either. And if he keeps his word, you know, the, you know the significance of that. John, do you think he did the right thing? <clears throat> well, um, yes, I do. If I had been in his position, I would have done exactly the same. Yeah. He just showed a um, total... He obviously doesn't respect John Terry anymore. And that, this was his opportunity to show... A total lack of respect to John Terry. John Terry. And Steve, very quickly, you thought right decision. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some people will say he should have shook hands and it would have put it to bed, but that's not their decision to make. It's it's, it's Wayne his Bridge's decision. to make. Absolutely, it's his decision when he wants to close this episode, and that's down to him. And he didn't want to close it today, and, and, and rightly so, I think. And, and sad that the Chelsea fans booed him. Oh, I oh, just uh, wait. Well, hey, I mean, it's just it's. it's Who um, are these people? Yeah. It, it's unfortunately that's uh, that's uh, that's football. Well, it's not. Sadly, it's, it's, it's not football. Well, it's moronic. football fans. Yeah. OK. Uh, right, final score continues. Uh, all you've got to do is press your red button now for more discussion on that. And it's the penultimate night in the Winter Olympics. You've got the slalom, the four-man bob, curling and speed skating. So that's all tonight. Right, that's it from uh, Steve and John and Garth. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.